Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that I want to say is I realize that there's a lot of folks that under my that hear me that that come to this ministry that don't read the Word of God. Don't take time each day to open their Bible and read the Word of God. And uh, we, we talk, uh, but um, uh, Jesus said, "Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word." that proceeds out of your mouth. What happens if you don't eat? You die. And it's the same, Jesus is saying you cannot live the life God intended you to live if you don't read the word of God. You should set to read a chapter a day. Every day you should read a chapter a day. That's your set. Now, do I read a chapter a day? No. Ask, why don't you read a chapter a day? Come on. Not everybody asked me. <laughs> because I get stuck on a verse. <laughs> right? That's why I don't read a chapter a day. I'll get stuck on one verse, and I can't, I'll be on that one verse for days. And you can, can get stuck on the chapter. That's why I don't read a chapter a day. I get stuck. I got stuck on a verse and I can't, and can't seem to move. But at least I'll, I get stuck. Some folks are not. You have your Bible. And you're going through the motions. Man shall not live by bread. You can't live this life in your own strength. Then it's religion. And religion can't help you. It's the word of God. Faith comes by what? And hearing the word of God. If you're not hearing that word, if you're not putting, well, well, I do my daily devotion. Well, what's that? If your daily devotion is not reading the word of God and meditating on the word of God, I don't know what you're doing. We are called to pray. We are called to pray. And some of you will go days without praying. Some of you have gone weeks without praying. We do not serve a crisis God. When all hell breaks loose, please pray for me. Please pray for me. I want to correct something. Prayer doesn't change a thing. Because if prayer changes things, then most of the poor people in this world wouldn't be poor because they're the most religious people on the planet. God changes things. God, in the name of Jesus, changes things. But if you're not lifting up your voice to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, things will not change. Things will not change. And, you're, and if, 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 if you're just going through the motions of things, you're not going to live the life God intended for you to live. Was Jesus Christ and is Jesus Christ the Son of God? Is Jesus Christ God in the flesh? Did Jesus pray? Did he pray every day? Did he pray multiple times a day? But yet he was God in the earth. Now, if the Lord Jesus thought it necessary to pray, then who are we? Jesus said, watch and do what? Lest you do what? Fall into temptation. That word temptation means trouble. And the reason why we have trouble is because we neglect prayer. We, 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 we neglect coming to God. And I, I believe in North America, we are too comfortable. We got OHIP. We got ODSP. We got welfare. I don't know what they call it now. They, you know, o, o, what is it called? Ontario Works. We got community housing. We got medical care. We got, you know, uh, uh, COVID hit and we got served. In majority countries in the world, you got nothing. 
You got nothing. You get, you have no money, you don't go to hospital. You have no money, you do not go to school. And we take these things lightly. Jesus said, can you not watch one hour? That's the minimum a believer should be praying each day, one hour. A minimum one hour. And don't tell me you don't have time to pray one hour. Get off social media. Turn that TV off. Because it's not going to help you. In your day of adversity, in the day of your adversity, when all hell breaks loose, Netflix is not going to help you. Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and, and TikTok is not going to help you in your day of adversity. When the spirit of depression and anxiety comes on you, it will not help you. It will not help you. It will not help you. We, you must answer the call to pray. We must pray one hour a day. If you're not praying one hour a day, you're being disobedient. And if you're being disobedient, you're giving place to the devil. Are you saying if I don't pray an hour a day, a day the devil's going to attack me? Yes! Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. That means if you don't watch and pray, you will fall into temptation. Who brings temptation? So if you are not watching and praying, you will fall into temptation. Jesus said, can you not watch with me just one hour? Watch and pray. How long? An hour. Lest you fall into temptation. And the reason why there's so much trouble in the lives of those who name the name of Christ is because you refuse to pray for one hour a day. Well, I don't have time. Then don't eat so much. Turn the TV off. Get off the phone. Don't wait for the day of adversity to come. And then you're wondering, oh God, why? Oh God, help. Turn the TV off. Whatever is stopping you from praying one hour a day, turn it off. Because the day of adversity will come. The Bible says the evil day will come. There is no temptation or trial that comes upon us that is not common to man. Trouble will come. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Trouble will find you. And in the day that trouble finds you, what will it find you doing? Notice Jesus didn't say temptation wouldn't come. He said you wouldn't fall into it. But it will come. Paul says that we may be able to stand in the evil day. The evil day will come. The evil day will come. The evil day will come. My, my son shared an uh, 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 incident that he, he decided to share with his parents now. And not the day it happened. He's in school for carpentry, and he's doing a second level. And so they were doing welding. And in welding, there, there's two gases that mix. I think it's called, um, what, uh, what is it called? Uh, that's it, oxygen and acetylene. Is it acetylene? Aceth acetylene, that's it. And th they have to be mixed at a certain ratio, correct? Correct? Well, what happened was one of, and uh, 
And if they are, if they are not mixed properly, you can have an explosion, correct? Like a really big explosion. Well, what happened was uh, one of the guys left the acetylene valve on. And the instructor noticed it and ran, literally ran. Because it wasn't just one tank. Remember, there's a bunch of guys, right? So each one have their tanks. And, and all that would have taken is for one person to g do the spark. And he, and he shut it off and he said, if I didn't shut off that valve, every one of us in this room would have been dead and wouldn't even know it. The explosion that would have happened would have killed every single person in this room and we would have never known what hit us. Well, he decided to tell us a few weeks after the fact. The reason why, I remember Cush, he was going to school in New York, and I believe you told him not to go back that night. Shelly told him, do not drive back that night. Well, he decides not to obey his mother, and he drives back that night. And, and the Lord began to deal with her and to pray. That night, he hit a deer. When the police came, the police said, I don't know how you are alive. Because most people that hit deers on the highway don't make it. Yeah, if the deer didn't kill him, the oncoming traffic would have. All right? And so, folks, that's why... Yeah, she prayed actually until 3 in the morning. Until 3 in the morning she was praying. And, but you know what? That's why you have to pray the word. We didn't know. We didn't know anything. We didn't know until after the fact. Um, but that's why you have to pray you have to pray the word. That's the word of God says, believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved, you and your house. That means the devil can't kill my children. and let, uh, He can't kill my children, period. But what that does is that God, uh, my children are saved. They are sudzo. They're delivered out from danger. Why? Because I pray. Because we pray. Your children are saved by your prayers. Your prayers save your children. I believe even the story I shared on Sunday about when I was about six, seven years old coming from school. And that man was following me. And the, God put it in my heart to go into the bushes and climb into the tree. The part I didn't share about was when I got up in the tree, my foot got stuck into one of the crevices on the branches. And I had to go, not, sc not scream. And the man came to where I, by where I was, where he saw me disappear, but he never looked up. I believe my grand, that was my grandfather's prayers. My grandfather prayed for my mother's resurrection from the dead. My mother died at birth. My mother was dead at birth. And, and, and in those days, they would just take the babies and put them in a, a, a paper bag. And then the news got to him that his daughter had died, and he just went into prayer. He just kept praying. Lord, don't allow my baby love. That's why her name is called love. He said, don't let my baby love die. Don't let my baby love die. And he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And about midnight, movement happened in the bag. Movement happened in the bag. 
I believe that my life has been preserved because of my grandfather's prayer. And folks, we take these things lightly. I don't take these things lightly. Children will do stupid things. Our children do stupid things. We as children did stupid things. <laughs> really dumb things <laughs> that we shouldn't do. But God is faithful. But folks, we cannot neglect the word of God and too many. And I, I, what I found, you know what? I have, I'd say the majority of people that lead worship got beautiful voices that I've personally met. They don't pray. They will tell me stuff like, oh, I pray in the car. What? Don't you actually spend time with God alone? No, no, no. I pray while I'm in the car. But worse said, I met the one guy, guy's got a beautiful voice. He plays an instrument excellent. I said, so when do you pray? Oh, when I'm on the bus. On the where? Yeah, when I'm on the bus, I talk to God on the bus. I said, okay. Yeah, you can tell. There's a lot of people that they're singing on worship teams and they don't pray. They spend no time in the word, but they'll get up and just, oh, how I love Jesus. And everybody's going, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, Jesus, oh, thank you, Lord. It's all emotion. That's all it is, is emotion. And in the day of adversity, when the evil day come, singing, oh, how I love Jesus, is not going to help you because you have no relationship. You have no relationship. You have no word in you. I remember God spoke to me and says, the reason why Christians die when they pray and die when other people pray is because he said they have no word in them and the people that are praying for them have no word in them. You cannot neglect the word of God and expect to live in victory. You cannot neglect the hour of prayer and expect to live in victory. Say, but I'm tired. That's you know, I, I most of my I don't, most of my life I could not stand the smell of coffee. Couldn't stand it. I mean, I just couldn't stand coffee. You know, I just couldn't stand coffee. Guess who's drinking coffee now? But I make sure I drink organic coffee. <laughs> it's organic. But you know, what's the difference? It's got no pesticides in it. But you know why I started to drink coffee? Because I need to stay awake to pray. And I wasn't about to do the energy drink thing. All that sugar and all that kind of stuff. So here comes organic coffee. <laughs> Why? Because I'm going to do whatever it takes to pray. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes. Why? Because I understand that if you do not pray, the devil will have his way with you. And if you neglect the word of God, the devil will have his way with you. He will have his way with you. And I believe one of the reasons why so many neglect uh, 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 early morning prayer, even coming out one day out of the week, is because the, uh, a 
for uh, well, you know, some people it's legitimate. They have work or vi uh, you know, transportation doesn't allow them. But there are people who can be here. But they're not here because uh, I question their personal prayer life. They're too busy, staying up late, doing what? The evil day will come. It's not if it's going to come. It's just a matter of when. I don't care who you are. You can spend 12 hours a day in prayer. You can do everything that God told you to do. And you know what? The evil day is going to come. It said they that live godly will suffer what? Persecution. It didn't say suffer sickness, disease, death, and failure. But it will suffer persecution. There will people come out after you. There are people who seek to come to make your life miserable. There are people who come out against you. And the, 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 the cry of the Father tonight is stop neglecting him. Stop neglecting him. Stop neglecting him. Spend an hour in prayer. I am committed, I say, to pray, to, excuse me, read a chapter a day. But sometimes I don't get to because I get stuck. <laughs> I get stuck on a verse. But that's okay. At least I get stuck on a verse. Some of you don't get stuck on anything because you didn't even open the Bible. And listen to me. Confessing scriptures. Well, I, I confess scriptures every day. Not, that, that's, not the, that's not the same. You need to read your Bible and learn and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. I confess scriptures every day. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. This is not what I plan on talking to you tonight, but this is how the Spirit of the Lord led. And so this is what I said. So I'll save that message for another day. I won't even tell you the title of it. <laughs> Christina, please make sure you don't put the title up. Well, I think you already did, don't it? We put it into live stream, don't we? Okay, I guess the title is already there. <laughs> well, change the title. <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, Christina, uh, change the title. Um, I don't know what. Pray and read the Bible. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you know, <laughs> if you don't pray, temptation will come. <laughs> Change it to if you don't pray, temptation will come. Well, temptation's going to come anyways. It'll come anyways. Folks, and I'm going to close with this. There is going to be man, humanity, have put their trust in medical science. But there are diseases that are going to come upon this earth. There are diseases right now. The hospitals are overburdened. And there are diseases that are going to come upon the earth. I'm not trying to scare you. But there are diseases that are going to come upon the earth. And it's only those who are committed to prayer and the word of God that's going to survive them. Only those who are committed to prayer and the word of God that's going to survive them. And that's why Jesus said, watch and pray so you don't fall into temptation. He didn't say, watch Netflix and pray. <laughs> he didn't say, watch the nightly news and pray. He says, watch, stay alert in the spirit. Know what is going on. But if you don't pray, you won't know what's going on.